Thank you, everyone. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for creating Sangha together. Right? That's what we're doing through your presence, through your listening, through your sharing, through your practice, showing up on Zoom or in the physical space. Mm. Yeah. Welcome, spiritual friend Sangha, right? We're creating it. We're becoming spiritual friends as we listen to each other, as we meet ourselves, as we listen to ourselves, as we meet one another. Yeah. And we're held by the Dharma Collective. It's a gift. It's a gift. So I invite you to move and stretch your body in whatever ways feel good. To you in this moment in time, you might stand up. And as you're ready, finding your posture for a stillness practice, maybe, maybe that will be seated, maybe lying down, maybe standing, and maybe not a stillness practice. Maybe you're going to walk. Great. You do you, finding the posture that most supports your practice right now. Whatever posture that might be. Taking the time to attune it. So it supports you now. But you're always changing. There's no like perfect posture or ideal posture. The posture you meditated in last time may or may not support you right now. You take the time to find out. It's not going to be perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. Like That's not the goal. And we can give ourselves the gift of checking in. And finding a posture that's supportive. And for those of you who are in the space, enjoying the bell it will be that little invitation to let you and the bell know it will be invited to sound. And then three full invitations of the bell. I invite you to really receive the bell, to practice listening inside. I've noticed for myself that I can kind of like lean in and the listening goes out. Or I can lean in to myself instead of leaning into the sound I can lean into myself and be with the experience of hearing I can be aware of hearing and that can be restful mind body and speech in perfect oneness, I send my heart along with the sound of this bell. May all who hear awaken from forgetfulness, transcending all anxiety and sorrow.
tuning into the body. Tuning in to the heart. Noticing the sensations that are present in the body, in the heart center, temperature, warmth, fullness. Contraction, flow, expansion, stagnation. Noticing what's here. And through that noticing, cultivating our ability to be with ourselves, to be with the moment as we are, as it is. Oh, it's like this. Tuning in. And as we tune in, we might find that we get too tight and focused. We're like, oh, soften, soften, soften. And we get too loose and Mind's all over the place, and then we come back, and you know, we're tuning. So there might be a little bit of a dance. We find our balance. Resting in awareness. Relax and alert. Not so relaxed that we're falling asleep. And not so alert that we're tense. But a balanced point in between. Feeling down into the low belly or staying where you are. Your practice, trusting your own heart, your own guts. And following my words, if it's supportive. Mm. 
Bringing awareness down into the low belly core. Resting. Opening. If you're able to rest into the field of awareness, or rest into awareness of this body resting here, please enjoy that. Enjoy this gift of rest. A little more focus would be more supportive for your practice now. I invite you to bring attention in to the experience of breath in the low belly. Not asking the breath to be any particular way, not controlling it or changing it, but rather meeting it, greeting it, getting curious about it, experiencing. Experiencing the breath in the low belly. Hi there. Noticing how it feels. Allowing the full range of experience to arise and pass as it does. Without us doing anything. Perhaps there's a story arising in the mind or there's an emotional state. We can notice this, become aware of it and greet it with our kind attention. Oh, this is what fill in the blank feels like. Ah.
continuing to rest in awareness. Maybe in a broad way or maybe in a more focused way. My experience of breath in the low belly can be a supportive. arena for this exploration of the cultivation of awareness. As can the sensations in the fingers or toes, hands or feet. And these days I'm partial to the experience of resting into the whole body, resting. But you do you. And can you do it, whatever it is, gently? Can you meet yourself? Can you meet the moment? Gently. Noticing the sensations that are present. The arising and passing sensory experiences. Embracing yourself with as much kind attention as is available. Maybe just a hair, fine.
Noticing your relationship to that which you are aware of. Perhaps there's a simply being with it that's present. Noticing how that feels in the body. Or maybe there's a pushing it away, some kind of aversion. Notice in your relationship to that which you are aware of. Maybe there's a chasing after, a clinging. Noticing how this relationship feels in the body. And if that's feeling complicated and you're not understanding me, letting it go and just resting into awareness of the body. The breath, the hands, the feet, the moment, moment by moment. Maybe resting into awareness of breath in the low belly core. Being curious, what's going on in your heart? Emotion, emotional state, heart state. There's some story that's present. And can you greet that with kind attention?
attending to ourselves. Attuning to ourselves. Coming to know ourselves. Moment by moment, ever changing. Resting and opening. Observing the arising and passing of experience, thoughts, emotions, sounds, sensations.
with whatever level of awareness is here, expanding that awareness into movement, like feeling the body move and maybe even feeling in to discern how the body wants to move. And when you're ready, as you're ready, allowing light in, whatever level of sightedness is available to you, expanding the field of awareness to include that as well. Thank you for your practice. So this evening is the first Monday of the month, the first Monday of May. So we have a practice of engaging with mindfulness trainings. And Walt is gonna share them with the folks who are on Zoom. So you have access and I'm gonna pass them around here or maybe ron is going to come and take them from me or are you going to the bathroom go to the bathroom go 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 get go get a drink and i'm going to pass them around here So this evening we'll read and hear <clears throat> contemplations of the five mindfulness trainings, a new paradigm for racial justice and the global pandemic. These were first offered to the Plum Village community in May of 2020 by Maricela Gomez and Valerie Brown and the Arise Sangha. Arise, awakening through race, intersectionality and social equity. Let us open to a new and deeper way of understanding the five mindfulness trainings. So before I start reading, so this is a, another practice of listening, right? So there's going to be some listening to your ears. We're all going to read, or those of us who are in the space are going to read. And I invite you to listen into your body, right? Notice how does your body respond? How is there resonance? How is there dissonance? Can you track what's happening in the heart and the gut? as you hear, as you read, as you listen. And if you're zooming in and you pull them up, if you choose to read along, notice that habit to kind of go ahead because of course you can read faster than we can say them aloud. And can you just stay with it? And those of you who are in the space, you don't have anything to read. So you can just, when it's not your turn. You might enjoy letting the eyes close and feel into the body or let the gaze land softly on the floor at a candle or something, or you can look whatever you want, but I do invite you to practice listening internally and listening audibly. And then when it's your turn to read, after I go, you will just go in order. You'll see if there's a, a first, second, third, fourth, fifth kind of thing. Take your time, take your time. And I guess one more thing I wanna say. Those of you who've been coming around for a little while or have some familiarity with the Plum Village tradition and Thich Nhat Hanh or Buddhism from other traditions, know that we have these five precepts or in the Plum Village tradition, five mindfulness trainings and they're kind of the basis for ethical behavior. So this is an extrapolation of those and it mentions them. So just, you know, I'm talking about, all right, here we go. Let us open to a new and deeper way of understanding the five mindfulness trainings, 
guiding principles for mindful and ethical living, which call us toward individual and collective awakening, compassion, and peace. We are aware that we are interconnected. What happens in Wuhan, China affects people in New York City. What happens to the black body affects all bodies. We are called forward. The global pandemic is a gateway to suffering worldwide, disproportionately impacting black people, indigenous people and people of color who face poverty, sickness, displacement and death. They are not alone. Our lives and livelihood are interconnected. We are called forward. We cannot exist independent of low wage workers, healthcare workers, unhoused people, single mothers, undocumented people, the unemployed and underemployed. If one such person lives on the knife edge, if one such person lives on the knife edge of racial, ethnic, social, structural, and systemic oppression and discrimination, we are all affected. We are called forward. The practitioner, that's all of us. The practitioner dwells in the now, recognizing equanimity and instability, discrimination and non-discrimination, ill-being and well-being. Practicing right view and engaged through compassionate action, aware of the cycle of racial, ethnic, and social inequities and discrimination, we courageously turn to practice wholeheartedly. We are called forward. Lighting a stick of incense, listening to the sutras, sitting upright and solid, palms joined. The practitioner looks within and in concentration, the path and fruit of skillful action is revealed. We talked about that a lot last week. We are called forward. Speak aloud these words with the Sangha voice, a true river of understanding. All right, the first contemplation of the first mindfulness training. You have the fifth one, Jimmy. Tom, which, do you have the first one, Tom? Yeah. Do you have the first one? I do. Great. <laughs> Sometimes I have a hard time hearing that. Aware of the suffering caused by oppression and generational harm based on racial, cultural, social, and ethnic inferiority and superiority, and its resulting structures of injustice and harm, I acknowledge the beauty and violence inherent in life. I vow to resist being complicit in systems and structure that continue to perpetuate violence and hatred instead of reverence for life for marginalized groups. I recognize that each person contributes to my individual and our collective awakening and the co-creation of a world that celebrates affirms differences and similarities. All living beings can teach me something when I remember to pause, breathe, listen deeply with a calm and open mind and heart and ask myself, is there more? Or what else is here with me? I honor and respect all life guided by right view and right energy. Noticing how it feels to read, to listen, resonance, dissonance, what's the body doing? I'm enjoying a, a couple of breaths, a few breaths with awareness. It's 
Tuning in, what else is here with me? And when you're ready, no rush. Maybe you want to do a couple more breaths. The person who has the second contemplation on the second mindfulness training would love to hear from you. Aware of the suffering caused by ignorance and aversion of my own and others' racial, ethnic, cultural, and social history, its legacy, and how this affects me, whether I'm aware of it or not, I'm committed to connecting to these histories. I know that turning towards these histories with an open heart is my journey of awakening to true belonging. I will take the time to learn the history of the racial and ethnic group with which I identify as well as for other socially constructed racial and ethnic groups. Aware that there is no genetic or biological difference between different racial and ethnic groups, and that these identities were constructed by one group to establish dominance over others, I will turn toward racial and other forms of othering with an open heart and compassionate action. I know that this history has led to fragmentation inside and outside body and mind and brought much suffering to all beings. I vow to transform this suffering through the practice of connecting with an open heart. I will notice when emotions of belonging and othering arise and I will ask myself why whatever feelings perceptions or mental formations arise I will embrace and when needed engage with love in action I am committed to practicing right resolve right speech right action and right livelihood so I can help relieve this legacy of racial and social suffering. I will practice looking deeply to see that true happiness is not possible without true connecting, leading to belonging and understanding. Listening into the body. Noticing resonance, dissonance, confusion, concern, whatever might be present for you, noticing it, allowing it to be there, greeting it. Being with yourself. As you practice openness and curiosity. Resting into awareness of the breath and the low belly. And as you're ready, when you're ready, continuing to the third. Contemplation of the third mindfulness trait, cherishment as true love. Aware of the suffering caused by discrimination and oppression, I vow to understand its roots. I will acknowledge and practice to transform seeds of discrimination in myself, as well as my sangha and society at large. I vow to recognize the ways 
in which I have benefited or not benefited explicitly or implicitly from systems and structures that foster discrimination and injustice. I am aware of the legacy of violence, especially unlawful police violence perpetrated against Black people, Indigenous people, people of color, differently abled people, people of various gender identities and expressions and sexual orientation, <clears throat> and others who are marginalized. I acknowledge the lived experience of all people to deepen my capacity for understanding and for greater compassionate action. I am aware that narrowly constructed prevalent interpretations of intimate relationships constrain how we cherish each other in our expressions of love, leaving many further isolated and alienated. I am committed to looking tenderly at my suffering, knowing that I am not separate from others and that the seeds of suffering contain the seeds of joy. I am not afraid of bold love that fosters justice and belonging and tender love that seeks peace and connection. I cherish myself and my suffering without discrimination. I cherish this body and mind as an act of healing for myself and others. I cherish this breath. I cherish this moment. I cherish the liberation of all beings guided by the wisdom and solidity of Sangha. This is my path of true love. Being with the body. Notice in the heart. Thoughts, emotions, physical sensations. All can be held in the field of awareness. As you're ready, when you're ready, no rush, continuing. Contemplation, fourth mindfulness training, vulnerability as loving speech and deep listening. Aware that vulnerability is the essence of our true nature, our humanness, I vow to risk listening and speaking non judgmentally with understanding and compassion to alleviate suffering and support peace in myself and others. I vow to live with empathy, compassion, and awareness and to listen for understanding rather than disagree. When I hurt others through my unskillful action or speech, I vow to practice making a good apology that acknowledges what I have done and offers sincere regret, knowing that this supports the other person and me. I'm committed to speaking that aligns with my highest aspirations and encourages honesty and truthfulness. I'm committed to generous and courageous listening that produces differences and supports understanding of others who may be different from me. I'm committed to taking meaningful steps to become a true instrument of peace and to help others to be the same. When I'm not able to understand the experiences of others, I vow to come back to my breath and my body and to offer myself gentle patience while learning to support myself in developing greater awareness and skill. I vow to practice awareness of my beliefs, perceptions, and feelings, aversions, and desires, and to take refuge in mindful breathing and in the sangha to support greater stability, peace, and understanding. Through my practices of vulnerability, patience, forgiveness, and deep listening, 
I know that my speech will be guided by love and understanding. Practicing in this way supports right speech and right action and guides me to right insight. Resting, opening. Tending to and being with. What lingers? Nothing, a word, a phrase, a felt sense in the body. Allowing it in. And continuing to the fifth contemplation. When you're ready, take in your time. Contemplation of the fifth mindfulness training, welcoming as true nourishing and healing. Aware of the suffering caused by the consumption of an inadequate history of racial and ethnic forms of social segregation, I am committed to healing myself and the world by welcoming and practicing with this awareness. I will notice how my thoughts, perceptions, feelings, words, and actions may have been influenced by this inaccurate history i would look deeply to understand how both physical and mental health for myself my family and my society have been influenced by embracing and denying this racial social and ethnic history of inferiority and superiority and its legacy of inequities and injustices i will cultivate joy support me toward individual and collective boldness i will practice Mindfulness of the four kinds of nutrients to become aware of how edible foods, sense impressions, volition, and consciousness are all influenced by this history. Practicing the right energy and right resolve, my right action of consumption will include awareness of certain websites, electronic games, TV programs, films, magazines, books, and conversations on how they continue to foster wrong perceptions of racial, ethnic, and social injustices. My understanding of inner being supports my conscious consumption that sustains a healthy understanding of differences, one that does not oppress or discriminate. This right insight will preserve peace, joy, and bring healing in my body and consciousness, and in the collective body and 
consciousness of my family, my society, and the earth. To assure that my descendants do not live in a racially, ethnically, and socially unjust world, I commit to diligently practicing and, and with true welcoming on this path to nourish and fill myself, Sangha, and society. The five mindfulness trainings keep us centered in life's storms and joys and remind us that life is a precious gift. The trainings are a path to liberation and transformation. Practicing these trainings supports us toward racial and ethnic reconciliation and social change and heals deep suffering. The five mindfulness trainings helps us cross the shore of suffering and brings us to the side of true awakening and love. We are called forward. Feeling into the body and the heart, appreciating your practice, your listening and sharing to the words of the Arise contemplations on the five mindfulness training as we endeavor to awaken through race, intersectionality. and social equity. Appreciating your practice as we learn and cultivate our ability to listen in and tend to ourselves and meet our needs. Know that as you practice, the earth and all beings benefit. May the fruits of our practice be of benefit to all beings and bring peace. Mm. Thank you so much for your presence this evening. It's a pleasure to get to practice in community. Hmm. Yeah. As you are able, your generosity of time, energy, Financial resources is a gift, a gift to me, a gift to the Sangha, a gift, gift to the collective. I send you with peace. Take good care of yourselves. Take good care. <laughs>